Hi, Martin here. Today I want to show you how to make a circle guide for your plasma cutter. So you can cut out perfect circles just like this. Really easy. I got a project coming up that involves this area right down here and this area right here where I really need that circle guide. So let's get started. Now this is a very easy and simple circle guide for your plasma cutter. All I got here is a one and a half inch wide piece of flat iron. It's a three eighths of an inch thick. And then I also have a piece of one and a quarter inch tubing with a one inch diameter. It has a uh, 0.125 wall thickness or one eighth of an inch, depending on what size circles you want to make. Let's say, for instance, this one here is going to make 38 inch circles. So the radius of that would be 19 inches, but we still need a little bit more length. You need a little bit here on the very end, which I got half an inch, and then I need another inch on this end. Uh, that's going to be our main hole down here for the plasma cutter torch, and also where this tubing is going to go. So this, so in other words, you need another inch and a half over the radius length. Okay, now. I'll show you on the bench how I got all these measurements here. And what I got here is, as you can see how they're marked, they're, I got a scribe line going down the center, and then I have a, a mark every one inch. Now just using your tape measure, I start down here, marking one inch and going on down here. Make a little scribe mark. Now, if you wanted, like I say, you come in here, and let's say we're going to go, we want to mark at every half inch. You can do that as well. Then you can come in here with a square and throw a line right in there. Now we'll have one at, this is actually probably going to be seven and a half inches. Yeah. That would be your seven and a half inch mark. Remember, when I put this on the end, we grow an inch there, but we don't really have that. We, this is our real measurement right there. Now, then I made a mark going down the center, and now we just need to center punch all of these locations right here. And then just try to be as precise as you can. Okay, and down here you can see I got two lines that are very close together. Okay, this one here is uh, 32 inches. That'll be my 32 inch circle mark. This back here is going to be my 31 and 5 eighths. And that's where I want to have that, where I want to make a particular size circle. Like I was saying before, you could add holes anywhere you want. Now these holes we're going to drill in here is just going to be big enough for a self-tapping screw. That's all we need. The only hole that's going to be any bigger is going to be the uh, hole for the torch itself. And that will be uh, 11 30 seconds. Oh by the way, what I used to uh, make this line right down the middle here, I used uh, my dial caliper. I set it up at three quarters of an inch, is half the distance here, and just laying it on here and dragging it down here. It will scribe a line there for you. It's a very handy tool. Okay, I got everything center punched right there. Now take it over here to the drill press and uh, start drilling holes.
Now I did get really close. Yeah, right here I almost blew that hole out. As you can see, and we got really close. But uh, it'll be fine. Now, this hole right here, this is where we're, the torch end of, of this is. We're going to drill that one hole out to 11.30 seconds, because that's the same diameter as the end of this torch right here. This piece is 11.30 seconds diameter. And then that will fit through that piece of metal. And you can see why we're using 3 8 metal. You see how nicely that comes right to the very bottom of that. Okay, here we can do a test fit on this. You're going to see it's got a really nice fit to it, just like that. Now another thing you might want to have to help secure the torch is a piece of tubing. This is a one and a quarter inch outside diameter with a one inch inside diameter, quarter inch wall thickness. And this was left over from a track bar that I was building some time ago. Now, I didn't actually cut any off of this, but I had a section of this tubing left over. So I got the one inch piece right here, just one inch long. That's all you need. Now, of course, that works with my torch. Um, I have a Hypertherm 350 and the outside diameter of this is right at one inch and that piece of tubing fits on there like it was meant to be. I mean just perfectly. So once we add that 3 8 thickness of that uh, metal there, we're going to be absolutely perfect. I mean this is going to be nice. And this is just going to help stabilize that torch as it swings around. So it doesn't put so much stress right here on the tip. Okay here I want to show you how I got it set up. I got that one inch piece in here. You want to get the bottom of it, especially the bottom side of it as square as possible when you cut this. That way the torch goes into it nice and smoothly. And then down here, I just stuck my tape measure in here. And I got my the cord of the torch going across here. And what it's doing is just pulling some weight off of here. So when I weld this in place, this is like a natural spot where it where it, the weight of the torch is not pushing down and it's just going to pull in and out of this nice and comfortably. So when I tack weld this piece on here, it's all everything is nice and square. Okay, as soon as you're comfortable where you got this piece mounted, you know where everything's exactly where you want it. I'm going to go ahead and tack weld it in place, check it, make sure the torch goes in and out properly and then it spins properly. And then I'll give it a few more tacks. And that's really all you need. All right, the welds turned out pretty nice. I mean, all you gotta do, like I say, is just get a few tacks on here to hold this. The torch fits in here real nice, just like that. And it spins nice and freely on here, and that's what you want. And this is very secure. This should cut a really nice, smooth hole, because there's not gonna be any flex in the torch head itself. That's where you got a problem with uh, thicker metals. When you're trying to cut that and you're doing it freehand, the thicker it is and you're you're wandering with the torch head angle like this. And that's where you get that wavy cut and it doesn't look very smooth. So uh, using a guide is always very nice. And by the way, you could use this for straight cuts as well. You're gonna use one of these holes, whichever one you want. Put your uh, pin in here, you know, a nut and a screw, and then use this, use that against the metal edge and glide it along as you're cutting and you're going to cut a nice straight line. Now one other thing I want to do before I show you how this thing works. I'm, I already started this. Let me show you right here if you can see that. I put uh, inch increments on here so I don't have to pull out a tape measure and measure this. I can just look 
here and say, oh, okay, there's 22 inches or 23 inches. And I just use this numbered steel stamp. These are very inexpensive. I'll put a link down below where you can get these. All right, I'm going to go ahead and continue, get the rest of the numbers put on here. And then I'm going to show you on a piece of 18 gauge steel, we'll cut out a circle. I'll show you how well this thing works. And just make sure you're not putting the number upside down or sideways before you stamp it. Yeah, those turned out nice, that 18, I like that. Okay, now we're almost ready to make some holes. Now, I, what I was planning on doing, and I'm gonna do, is all I'm gonna use is this self-tapping sheet metal screw, basically. And run it through whatever diameter hole you're looking for, and then this is gonna spin. Now, you may not like that because now you're putting a hole right in the middle of your workpiece. Now, I'm just gonna tack it shut with a welder and grind it smooth. This, this is another thing I came up with. This is a rare earth magnet right out of a computer hard drive. I just took a sheet metal screw, tack welded it right to the bottom there, and then this becomes a way of spinning it around. Now you're thinking, wow, that's, that's cool. The only problem with this, it lifts this bar off the workpiece where this doesn't lay nice and flat against the sheet metal. And it actually adds a little bit of flex to the bar too as you're moving it around so I I'm not really crazy about that that's where this the bar is going to lay flat against the workpiece it can't wobble and um, personally this is the way I'm going to go with this is always an option though all right what I got here is a piece of steel 18 gauge is 36 by 48 inches and this is for the project I got right back here. Now, what we're going to do is cut out one nine inch hole. And that is actually for the project I got coming up. Now I got a much larger piece I still need to cut out, but we'll save that for the next video. All right. So what I'm going to do, I just got a self tapping screw here. I got it already marked out. All right, we're gonna cut out a nine inch hole. Here's my nine inch mark right there. All right. All right. And here we go.
And I may have rushed it just a little bit right in here. There we go. <laughs> How do you like that? Isn't that awesome? All right, well, there we have it. I think that turned out really nice, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I sure appreciate the thumbs up. That helps out the channel immensely. And if you've never subscribed to me before, please hit that subscribe button right down there and that little bell symbol right next to it. And that way you get notifications of my next and upcoming videos as I release them. And speaking of which, I can't wait to start this project that I made this for. That's gonna be a big deal for me. Uh, it's a project I've been looking for a long time to do. So stay tuned for that. And I'm also an Amazon affiliate. Please check out the links down below where you can do all your Amazon shopping right through one of those links. And that helps out the channel financially. I earn a small commission. Thank you. And thanks again for watching. And we'll see you on the next one.